Well, I had a whole thing. I was talking about hoping Alex was recording and it was about the Liam Neeson you, movie. You know, a professional person would probably just keep going with it. I mean, I'm not a professional. <laughs> Who are we kidding? Well, neither am I. I forgot to push record on my <laughs> mic. <laughs> well, yeah, and I can't play along. But yeah, you know, I had I had something for you for you folks out there uh, about the Liam Neeson movie called Pursuit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about that and shit we watched today. But uh, for all you people out there, just know that the Liam Neeson was not going after black people in the movie. Strangely, um, oddly. Yeah, I mean, I don't I mean even, you'd think, right? I like, mean, I don't know why they didn't think about like the fact that he was going to do this interview in the future and write their movie accordingly. For well, it just know. goes to show that him and the filmmakers have no integrity because you want to make your movie as realistic as possible. When yeah. you're When you're doing like a gritty action movie, you it's know, not true to real life. No, not but, true to real life. Liam Neeson. But yeah, I will uh, dive into that a little bit this week on board and annoyed. What's our topic this week? Uh, this week, we are going to be discussing uh, thanks to battle angel Alita, uh, not doing horribly but not doing great at the box office we're going to be discussing anime adaptations why don't they work why aren't they popular uh and uh you know what what could be done about it um i am the anime connoisseur he's the dweeb i'm the dweeb yep which uh there's a reason right there that maybe uh, they're not successful <laughs> and uh and and jackson Good is point and jackson is a, a an anime uh novice I yes think he's, sure he's, i don't i'm not up of it's it doesn't like you know, disgust me by right. any means. I'm just not into it. Yeah. Right. So we kind of got two very disparate uh, points of view on this topic. Welcome to Bored and Annoyed. I am home with the movies. And I'm Jackson. Bored and Annoyed. My nose is all dry all the time. Every time I blow my fucking nose, there's like blood. And it's just. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, no good alternatives for picking your nose. Right. I mean, when it's like a fucking sand trap in there. Yeah. Nothing you can do about it. Ugh. But anyways, <laughs> let's talk about the news. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Captain Marvel. Sure. Captain Marvel has new projections. First ones came out about a week ago. Those were at 100 million. Uh, Deadline did that, and it was kind of like the the, the base. It's going to do 100 million at, at minimum. All right. Now uh, the Hollywood Reporter is reporting that it's going to do 120 million. Sure. Um, you know th this is just standard. This just keeps happening. You know projections usually rise as a movie gets closer to release. Gee, you know it's funny though that the tracking when it's positive that number goes up. Like you know we Alita this weekend, the yeah. tracking was all piss poor. Yeah. Um. You think maybe that has something to do with like bad buzz and fucking these movies over? I mean, everybody just thought Alita was going to suck balls because they've been reading for a month that it's a bomb. Yeah. So it turns into a bomb. You know, I, I I'm going to save that for our main topic. Yeah, I, well, My, I'm going to save that 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 take. But it's interesting. I, I you know, we had sort of like a box office pro, which isn't an official tracker. Sure. Uh, like a month ago, they put out the whole like 140, 160. Okay. So now we're getting closer to that with official tracking, but the trolls are already out and they are reviewing this movie on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, giving it terrible reviews, saying uh, Brie Larson's an SJW and and uh, this is a uh, woe man and, you know, uh, all that. Uh, the libtards are back at it again. All that stuff. Okay. Which uh, it's. It's it's uh you know you can not be excited about a movie all you want and also you can disagree with Brie Larson on her takes about white males. I was gonna and, say I was gonna hope we get into that just a tiny bit. Like too, you can you, you can disagree with all of that all you want, and you can not be excited for this movie, but when you take it to the point of like reviewing a movie that you've never <laughs> seen and saying like whoa man and woke and SJ like take it down a few notches. It makes you look like you have no life. It's true. Uh, and and honestly, I would argue that if you do that, you might not have much of a life. That might be true. Now, how do you feel, though, Alex, knowing that if you were on the circuit to review this movie, Brie Larson might I'm not, stop I'm, you from attending and right. reviewing the movie? And I'm not a fan of that. No, neither am I. But you're right. I The trolls. I mean, what do you expect? 
Yeah. Well, they're, it's, it's they're so, going to like lash out at, you know, it's such a strange time we live in, though. I mean, you know, there was that group of people who was like, we love the DC movies and we're going to make Infinity War bomb and we're going to make uh, a Black Panther bomb and we're going to do that with Solo and we're going to. I bet tank there's a those. mix of them in there. Yeah. The, like, that. Yeah. It's so strange. Like what's like these are all like 13 year olds who have nothing but i mean my I, I, franchise is better than your franchise i mean i'm pulling a melissa mccarthy and saying like these are all like 30 year olds living in their mom's basement or they're 13 year olds you're yeah, pulling a bill exactly Maher. but i mean the mentality behind that is so strange and foreign to me like really like you don't even know this if this movie is good you haven't even seen it yet right take it down a notch yeah i agree i mean i'm excited to see it i think it looks kind of blame but 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 I also think that it's Marvel, so it'll be good. There's a bit in it that and it's just one like half second shot or whatever, which is her like flying towards the camera, pulling her fist back to punch something sure. in the air. And then she punches like a plane or whatever. And I'm like, it's Dragon Ball Z. OK, it's, it's going to be a female go. Dragon Ball Z anime topic, anime topic. I'm, all, I'm right. all on board. Uh, let's go into TV TV corner. So Punisher and Jessica Jones are officially canceled. Yes. It's it's all done. Good. We can I mean, move on. I mean, Jessica Jones is going to come out with its third season. How still. the fuck did that happen? That it got a third yeah. season? It was the second series to come out after Daredevil. Yeah, but the second season wasn't that long ago, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how Netflix works. I really don't. It's fucking I mean, we got to wait like three fucking years for Dark, but hey, Jessica Jones, oh every six God. months, here's your Jessica Jones. <laughs> Come and get it. <laughs> well, yeah, no, they had a long wait, like between one and two, I feel yes. like. Yeah. But yeah, now this one's already like it's happening. OK, I yeah. guess you blew all your money on it. The you series that shit, everybody would show. <laughs> fucking uh, garbage. But, uh, yeah, it is garbage. Uh, Jeff Loeb. Uh, responded to the whole like this, these series are cut, which uh, Jeff Loeb is the head of Marvel TV. And he basically said, even though our partner decided to end this, we're not. Uh, it's not the end for us or whatever. Oh, they're not giving up. He's throwing a little shade at Netflix. Of there, course he is. Yeah. OK. Which to me, I'm like, right. dude, Jeff, you made terrible TV shows. Yeah, they were terrible. Why are you throwing shade? Netflix has great shows on their own. Problem is you. Yeah, it's probably true. That's all I'm saying. I mean, unless Netflix insisted on the 13 episode fucking seasons with arcs that were way too long and drawn out and fucking boring. <laughs> they wrote and, that in the contract. Yeah, I mean, arcs honestly. must be long and boring. <laughs> must be 13 episodes. It's it's in there. In it blood. is. It's honestly like if they were good to their fans, if there was some contractual obligation for whatever reason to make 13 episodes at the beginning of like episodes five, six, seven and eight should have been a little disclaimer. Please feel free to not watch this episode. Yeah. Jump ahead to episode nine if you would like to continue with interesting things that are going on because we're just going to waste your time for the next four and a half hours you mean what i ended up doing yes, with correct <laughs> it probably greatly it probably improved the fuck out of your experience with that season of television it didn't improve it it just expediated it, it improvement that's, we that's get true. bonus points that's for true. shorter movies <laughs> that's true <laughs> <laughs> that's true uh going on with cancellations <laughs> this is not a good one counterpart on stars yeah. is canceled so i'm i was i think i shared my worry for this yeah last week or maybe the week before yeah, yeah. um so i turned on the old uh smart tv to watch my counterpart on star the stars app or whatever right and it said right there like series finale Oh, like right before I click the button to start it, there I'm wasn't just like, even like a fucking uh, kidding me. This was how it broke to me that it was over. <laughs> That's awful. Yeah. And then uh, it, and I had said, like, it feels like they could wrap this up. Right. Did um, they? So they they could have. But then there's one scene right at the end uh. that says, oh, OK, so now there's something that I need to know. So I'm bothered by this. <laughs> um, and if you've listened to our Alita review, this is we got into can't, it on this. It's kind of the same thing. Can't 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 you? It's it's called art film. You know, not everything Ooh. has closure, Jack. It was. Okay. I'm just kidding. But but apparently they're shopping it around. I hope People so. Are hoping someone picks it up. Um, is there but, anything explicitly like rated R about it? Could it come to like CBS or NBC? It wouldn't work because it, it 
commercial breaks, I feel like would fuck it. It doesn't mm. feel like that kind of show. I mean, gotcha. there is some explicit shit in it. It well, could you, go to like CBS All Access or was, Amazon or something. Though. I was going to say, we've got uh, something that's well known for saving series. What's that? Netflix. Yeah. Arrested uh, Development. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. See, there I feel like it would have a little bit too much competition, maybe. Because mm. the other problem I think that if you're trying to save a show is that the person's going to see it on, like, the Netflix menu or whatever. Right. And and I know this has happened to me where it's like, I think The Killing was one that Netflix grabbed from, like, AMC or something. And they did a final season. But but I it, it's too daunting mm. because I know, oh, I have 20 episodes to watch to catch up. Right. As opposed to like, oh, this season just released new content where you're just like, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to start that because it just came. Whatever. Right. Um, But yeah, it was it was good. It was a good season. It wasn't as good as the first one. Um, But yeah, the, no. But the main part of this is stars can eat my ass because they're <laughs> fucking assholes. They have canceled. I thought the best show on TV was Boss with Kelsey Grammer. He was like a yeah. corrupt mayor of Chicago, won a Golden Globe for Best Actor. Mm-hmm. It was nominated for Best Drama, I think, both the years it was on. Right. Canceled. Okay. Uh, you clearly aren't marketing anything correctly because I honestly, I have a buddy, for instance, who's a counterpart guy. He watched the first season, had no fucking clue the second season was even on. Right. And then the other thing is when they're, I was reading up on why they canceled this. Apparently it was like 250,000 people a week were watching it live or whatever, but they don't even calculate the app viewers. Oh, like that's not part of the calculation. Well, that's really weird. Why would you it's, do it that way? It's literally like Nielsen rating style. Oh, man. When the show comes on the channel. So that's how they're in this new era. Th- this is how they're that's deciding. A, do this do they not understand how insane that like we've known for decades that the Nielsen rating system is super flawed. Right. Well, it's that style. But it's I don't like, know how uh, they do it. But, but that's all that we have. But I you know? never, never have watched this show on the channel so as far as when stars is concerned never as far as stars is concerned you don't exist I'm not a viewer correct they're, they're, they're sitting yeah. here and you're and you're like why did you cancel the show and they're like why are you yelling at us you never watched yeah, it exactly but how stupid though yeah. like you'd think it'd be easier to track and they have to be tracking it they have to be tracking like okay this username got on watch this episode right. at this time i mean it's just fucking annoying and yeah good for them they canceled the fucking show now now they've got some other fucking show well, what about your tin star landers tin stars coming back okay and that's uh that's a bbc show that amazon picks up i oh, believe so there might be like hope that that could last yeah there's an outside partnership. I think that's gonna last because okay. i think that one's more famous like in great britain or whatever okay um but yeah, no, they can they can eat dog shit. It makes it really pisses me off because I get invested in these fucking shows. Right. You shouldn't even start watching these shows until like three years are in. Mm hmm. I mean, fuck them. I, like I was pissed and I watched it and it was just gross watching it because I knew, you know, so I'm just sitting there like this is fucking terrible. And it was a good ending. It had a pretty good ending. But yeah, but there, it was gross. It was gross. Yeah, because it's depressing. I'm like, oh, so, you know, the, you know what's his name? Looking all sad and mopey. Uh, uh, J.K. Simmons, oh. you know, he's got that like puppy dog look on his face. Guy's and you're like, great. I know, J.K. I know. Guys, I fucking understand. Great. But yeah, apparently like all the actors were on saying like hashtag save counterpart. So yeah, if you guys want to throw out a hashtag save counterpart, go for it. You bet my you bet your ass I'll be doing that on uh home at movies there on Twitter. <laughs> Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Use my sadness to plug your YouTube. Yep. Or no, your YouTube. I just plugged your YouTube. Yeah, there it is. On accident. <laughs> But yeah, I could continue. I'm done ranting. About okay. Fuck stars. Well, Hashtag uh, fuck stars with a Z. <laughs> Not with an S, because then it's just you're pissing off all of Hollywood. All the stars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, how do you feel about the fact that that show is canceled? Okay. But Jack Ryan is getting a third season before Before, season two even comes out. I mean, I'm not going to I'm happy about it because I'm going to watch it even Mm -hmm. though. But yeah, this show is leagues better than that. (laughs) It's not even a question, but I am happy because I'm like, oh, you know what? Now I can watch the second season of Jack Ryan and not just be sitting there going, ah. 
they're just going to cancel this. This is going to be kind of a weird experience for you because you watched first season of it yes. before you watched The Office. Now yes. you have like full like view of John Krasinski, you know, as yeah, an actor. See, now luckily in The Office, he's not like the wacky character. He's kind of the straight man. Yes, so he yes. can still work for me in other stuff. Right. But you're right. I am going to be like, oh, Jim. Like, I know him as Jim now. Yeah. You just, I feel like, I, I feel like the thing about uh, uh, The Office is that a lot of the characters, you're just, you feel like they're family by the end. Sure. So with a lot of those actors, you're just, anytime they pop up in anything, like Stanley pops up in that damn puppet movie from last year. He's, oh no, he was in that. Yeah, he was. He was the uh, chief of police, Melissa McCarthy. Oh, that's chief hilarious. Of, yes, yes. And I was happy to see him in a terrible movie, but I was happy to see him. Oh God, yeah. That's, uh, can I can I withstand if 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 Jim Halpert gets kidnapped by some extremist Muslim terrorists? <laughs> am I going to be able to? Ooh, Oof. Think Oof. about Pam and the yeah, children. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and then Dwight shows up. Yep, Beats. they should. They should. Just got they a should beat fucking machine hire. Gun. They should. They should hire Dwight as like a character in the show. That actor, I know he's not doing much. He I think he was Rain in like some Star Trek shorts or something. Ray, Rain Wilson. Yeah. He's actually a decent actor too. I've seen him in stuff outside of it. He he's, was pretty fantastic in the Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what a callback! What a callback! <laughs> That's for those longtime listeners. <laughs> yeah, our longtime <laughs> listeners of six months. Yeah, yeah. Yes, right. I agree. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to just keep going with more TV news. There's been lots of TV news sure. this week. Uh, Kelsey Grammer, we were talking about him earlier. Yes. Hopeful for the Frasier revival. Cause, yes. Because it's actually in the works. I actually heard this one on the radio. He was being interviewed and he said apparently they're looking for, you know, they're it's being actively written by a few different people. And if they right. have like a script and an outline they like, mm -hmm. they're going to do it. They're going to try to put it on like a streaming service like a Netflix or something. So are they going to get like uh, David Hyde Pierce? I would assume it sounds like he he's interested in everyone who's alive and able to be yeah. back on the show. And I Sadly, don't think they're that that busy sadly you can't get uh the father Dave mahoney yeah. mahoney yeah he was he was great and he's like the yeah i know see that's my worry is he's kind of like the center of the show because he's like the the straight man normal like guys guy surrounded yes. by all these fucking like therapists I mean, and you know well you, you get Roz and she's kind of that too but she's that to a much lesser extent because she's right. not for a long time she's not as big of a character as, as sure. he is. And she's kind of got that. She's like the slut, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. You know, that oh, man. Niles with the jokes with her are fucking hilarious. Oh, but yeah. man. <laughs> they won't be able to do that anymore. Yeah, slut that's shaming. possibly true. Uh, but yeah, so there, I'm excited about that. I'd be interested in seeing what they do there. He says the character moved to Chicago, so it wouldn't take place in Seattle the way he's envisioning it. Right. Um, It would be like a new setting. Who knows what's going on with everyone? I imagine he's probably got a, a, a. I hope that whoever he was going to Chicago for, I forget what the who the woman was. I never liked her as much as I like Lilith. If I'm honest, oh, good old Lilith. I like Lilith a lot. <laughs> I thought I, th I won. I think she's actually a beautiful woman. She's like for like super pale. She's actually very pretty, but also like her di their dynamics. Yeah, but they kind of like hated each other. They, I don't know. They hate loved each other. Of course, but then she slept with Niles. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> the the best was uh, what was Niles's is. Uh, uh, wife's name. Oh, you never God. saw her. Oh, got Maris. Maris. Oh, just that that I'm show the... was really fucking great. Yeah, it really was. But yeah, I'd, I'd be excited to see what happens. I'm, you know, I would be really excited to see that back on. That's one of my favorite shows of all time. Now, it does. It is possible that it would suck. Let's be real. Yes. I mean, but I mean, if we're going to be talking about shows that kind of deserve, I mean, that's maybe a topic for an episode there right there. Yeah. Shows that deserve to come back. I absolutely believe that Frasier is a show that deserves to come back sure. because m most of it was pretty great, even after uh they uh, uh yeah the, 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 the Daphne two guys Niles. Yes. yeah after they got together it was still a good show yeah it wasn't as good though it wasn't as good no but i mean i didn't i didn't mind it they were like the jim and pam before jim and pam in a way like they were like yes. the two that everybody for years yes. people were watching 
Like, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? You know, I'd imagine it might have even turned off a few people. Oh, yeah, because it went on forever. I mean, it was so fucking funny. Yes. I mean, some of the situations were so funny. But yeah, I'd be excited. Uh, So we've got some Loki news. Oh, yeah. I heard about this. Yeah. So uh, it's got a showrunner. And uh, I guess we're getting basically uh, uh, Quantum Leap, but with Loki. I like it. Yeah, he's going to be uh, going throughout time, and it's going to be kind of like a, um, I don't know, just a, a history of Loki throughout history, actually. Okay, so he's going to be Loki, though. He's not taking the form of, like, other people and trying I to think fix he, problems in their lives. I, I think he's actually, no, I think what he's, it's the inverse of Quantum Leap, where I think he's actually going to, like, shape shift and be like Genghis Khan or okay. Alexander the Great, and he's going to make things worse throughout history. I like it. Yeah, I'm actually a really big fan. Yeah. It's like, it's a that cool That sounds idea. great. Yeah. Actually, you know what? If you wanted to redo Quantum Leap, talk about shows that I wouldn't mind coming back. Mm. That premise. Yeah, it's a good it's a good premise. I like that show. The yeah. idea of that show. Anyway. And you can do it's one of those shows that like, you know, for all those, you know, uh, 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 we need to everything that we do now has to be a black man or a, a woman. Oh, you, know? you could do it all. You could do anything. Well, the main character can be anything because it's it's such a strong premise. It doesn't matter who right. the main character is. It doesn't need to be a, a white male for all those people who hate seeing white males in, in lead roles. I say you just bring Scott Bakula back. Just he, let him continue. He's got a ton of charisma. I actually I like of, Scott I actually Bakula. Kind of, I mean, I wasn't a fan of that Star Trek show that he was in. I never saw that one. I, I never I saw, saw that couple, one. I saw a couple episodes. It's kind of boring. Yeah. But. I'm sure it was made for like four dollars so but i do want to throw somebody under the bus on Ooh. this on this whole loki news so there's a website called comicbookmovie.com okay it's it's a relatively decent site um but there's a guy who writes for it called josh wilding okay and uh, he put out this article saying rick and morty's michael waldron is the showrunner that's what and, i saw and the thing that makes me laugh is so i looked up this michael waldron he was a production assistant on Rick Fake and Morty. News. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You got to get the Rick and Morty like clickbaity title because he was a product. He got people coffee on Rick and Morty. He didn't do real work on Rick and Morty. Ooh, are you insulting those who get coffee? I'm just saying, don't act like they were like a creative consultant on the show. Okay. Yeah. You I, know? Uh, good beef. I, I would agree. But I mean, also production assistants, you're all necessary. We all appreciate you. Sounds like Alex just th- shits on production assistants. I love all of my production assistants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your, your index finger. Yeah. Your thumb. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> We have good fun here. Uh, did you see that picture that uh, Star Wars shared on the, on the oh, social media? So emotional and the, the, beautiful. Uh, the, the hug. In the, the hug desert. heard around the world. Yeah. Looks like it could have been taken when they filmed From the first, the first movie. one. Yeah. Because nobody's changed. That was the picture. Okay. So we're, uh, Star Wars Episode Nine has finished filming. That's actually the story. And they released a picture of Ray, Finn, and Poe hugging. And that's the picture that made me realize... I have virtually no emotional attachment to these people. And all it took was one lackluster movie to do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, they didn't. Because nobody went anywhere. Nobody did anything. No, when I think of where they're at, like I am jumping in my head directly from the end of Force Awakens to this. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. It's kind of interesting. I just can't believe that, like, I mean, if this is something that actually happens in the movie, I'm like, this is so not earned. And I, I talked about how I watched The Force Awakens recently. I mean, recently. we'll see. We'll see. I mean, who knows? It could be good. It could be. It could be good. It could. It could. You know what? It probably will be. I like JJ. Be. It probably will be good. It'll but, be entertaining. But there's a part in, uh, there, there's something, I have a gripe about The Force Awakens because I, like I said, I just, yeah. uh, I just recently watched it. And again, obviously. And, uh. Everybody hugs in that movie, like all the time, like Ray and Finn hug, like they've known each other. Oh, are you okay? Poe and Finn hug. They met for five minutes. Yeah, that's kind of Star Warsian, though. It's a, it's a bit much. I don't know. It doesn't bother me. It God, bo- you're an anti-hugger? No. What I don't about like, production I- assistants who <laughs> hug? <laughs> They're the worst. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. Uh, you know, though... It- it is funny because that movie, I feel like now I if, I if it's on, I've watched it since The Last Jedi came out. Right. It's like I watch it with like poop smeared glasses now. Oh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> poop smeared, huh? Yeah. It's like instead of the rose tinted glasses when you first saw it, now it's like, oh, 
you you've been dragged through the pile of shit and now you're going back and watching this thing and it almost has been ruined it's still a competently well-made movie i like the movie yeah i think it's the best star wars movie we've gotten since the renaissance of star wars so, yeah um but yeah it does it's uh i can almost smell turds when i watch it hmm what can i say that's a pretty uh, hot, hot, poopy take. Ooh, hot take. Yeah, hot, hot, hot take. <laughs> hot shit take. It's a hot well, yeah, shit. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. I that's, don't know. That's all right. Yeah, tweet if you agree. <laughs> <laughs> tweet where, Jackson? Bored, bored, annoyed. Oh, bored, annoyed. Bored, annoyed. No way. But yeah. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some other good pieces of news okay. out of here. Jared Leto, Joker movie canceled. Good. Gone. Get the fuck out, Jared. You and your fucking used condoms, anal beads, fucking dead rats sent to people. Get the fuck out of here. Somewhere out there, there's a production assistant named Jared who hugs a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Who worked for Jared Leto. (laughs) Yeah, and he really feels bad. Yeah. but Oh, I I feel bad for him. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Yeah. I mean, are are you a a fan of this cancellation? You got to be. I don't give a shit. I, I had no excitement to see it. So good. Okay, good. Good. I was going to say, I hope you weren't like... No, yeah. I'm stoked for this. I'm okay with this. Okay. Uh, So Thanos, Josh Brolin, and Aquaman, Jason Mimosa, is joining... uh, Dune. Dune. Uh, Yeah, I was really excited when the first news came out, and then they dropped that second bit about Mimosa. Yep. Whew. Hopefully he's just like some big, tough guy who just fucking stands there. Uh, I guess he's going to be like a, like a bodyguard for like the main Royal family. I don't, I don't know. Oh, I wonder something if he's Idaho like, or something. Oh, he might be a Duncan Idaho. Yeah. Something if like he that. Is, fuck. Why is that? A, like it's a, a really, big character. Is it a big character? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think that's his name. Yeah. I think it's Duncan Idaho. It so- sounds about right. Yeah. He's like a uh, Paul Atreides is like trainer, uh, protector guy. Oh, fantastic. Oh God. Oh, Oh, which means I know what they're going for. What are they're they going, what are they for? What are they well, going they're for? They're going for like the meek pussy character of Paul Atreides and Duncan Idaho is going to be like the swashbuckling mm. badass bodyguard guy. Permission to come aboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I mean, it's just, I just, you know, looked up Duncan Idaho Mm. and like you pull up the concept art and it's like, it's not fucking Jason Momoa. Stop it. Unless he cuts his hair and looks all slick for this movie. No, he's he's got a look, man. I know. He looks like jacked Rob Zombie. Yeah, he's going to show up with like face tats or some stupid shit. So I'm like, he's going to do some sort of like a Polynesian dance just like (laughs) he did in Aquaman. The dancing of Arrakis. Yeah. Arrakis shake his ass. That just really bummed me out because that's like one of my favorite. I just made a great joke and I got nothing. Ah, that joke sucked. That is great. Arrakis shake Figures his ass. Asses. Yeah, that's good. Let's not make that the little subtitle <laughs> joke this week. <laughs> but yeah, what's next? I, uh, get Zach- me off this Duncan Idaho. Z- Z- uh, Zachary Levi, the guy who's playing Shazam. Okay. Uh, he expressed his dismay with the uh, the Thor movies because he played uh, Fandral in those. He was the uh, the swashbuckler, the guy with the uh, the goatee and the the blonde oh, hair. He had okay. the sword. Sure. Um, he only did it in the second one because uh, there was uh, another guy who played him in the first one. Okay. Um, some sort of scheduling conflicts. So uh, yeah, he played him in the second one, and then uh, spoiler for Ragnarok, I guess uh, he got killed unceremoniously without a single line in uh, Ragnarok. Oh, so he's bitter. He's bitter. But it's like, dude, nobody really responded to the Warriors 3 in those movies. They It wasn't Thor and the Warriors 3. It yeah, was, in the first movie, they were a little more important. In they that. were. And then in the second one, they kind of felt like they were... It felt like they were forced into the movie. Like, right. we have to give agree. them something to do. Yep. And then... Taika Waititi, being a smart person, realized the vast majority of people who watch these don't even think about you. Don't give a shit. So we're killing you. Right. Good. Good. Good move. So I, I you know, but now he's shitting on Thor, right? Yeah. He's oh, the wasted potential. Well, yeah, you could do a Thor and the three warriors movie if you wanted. 
but that's way less interesting than Thor and his dad. Well, and, and his I'm sorry. Brother. Now you have your own franchise. Like, make something of that and shut right. the fuck up and move on. Well, I'm sure he was asked in this interview. Yeah, that's true. You know, so I mean, he had to respond, but also at the same. Yeah, but I that's get- where you respectfully say something along the lines of, "Hey, I had a great time doing those mm. movies. You know, it was a wonderful experience, and uh, hope wish them the best." Right. I, well, it's 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 a level of like I wish that you had enough self-awareness to understand that your part was a very bit part. Right. You know, I agree. That, you know, you, you can be disappointed, but you know, don't act like you were a, you had no arc. I agree. But anyways, last piece of news. This is one that uh, I'm sure excites you. The Academy backs down on the awards, the controversy, yeah, the, the, the cinematography. Putting it on during the yeah. commercial breaks. Yeah. All I think it's that. a good move. Yeah. I don't know how excited I am because it's not that exciting to watch, but, but, uh, <laughs> But I'm excited for the people who do the work to make movies that want to be recognized and don't want to have it happen during a commercial break. I'm excited for their families. Um, Kind of saw it coming just because it seemed like after we recorded the next day or two, it was just people like, uh, what? What? Yeah, Yeah. it was just blew up everywhere. God, they're fucking up. It's it's really it's really great because it's basically to the point where every change that the Oscars made this year has been like taken back yes kevin hart please come back nope <laughs> I don't we, want we made to. the popular film <laughs> i don't want to yeah yeah we made the popular film no nope, we don't want it hey cinematography who cares about that hey it's back i feel like they were trying to like do the right thing by like trying to make this more of like a oscars for everyone give the people who what they want as far as right. the popular film category maybe even this you know, um, but yeah, it didn't work. You know what this is, is this is the Oscars are in an abusive relationship with America. Yeah. Because they're like, you want us to be shorter and more fun and more mainstream. How about a popular movie? Award? No, no, I don't want that. <laughs> I actually kind of feel bad for them. Yeah. Like, I get what they're going for, but. They're going about it all the wrong ways. There are ways to shorten the show and make it more entertaining and not just have like pompous, make it look like pompous assholes standing up there, like right. preaching their bullshit, like right. crying because they really did great in this movie. I don't know. And maybe I sound like a prick, but it's just. I was going to say that's It gets that, old. That's what the Oscars are. I know, right. But that's my point. Like. You're saying we should fundamentally yeah. change it. Yeah. No speeches. Just uh, just a nice little salute from your chair. I don't know. I don't know what you do. I don't know what you do. But maybe everybody receives their awards at home and they make a 30 second video at home and they can be as creative as they want. With for 30 they, seconds? For 30 seconds. That would actually be, I mean, would, wouldn't you be interested in seeing what people come up with? In all honesty, you'd have some really good ones. Like if Will Ferrell ever won a fucking Oscar. His would be pretty good you for 30 seconds. You have a 30 second limit, but everyone makes a loser and a winner version of it. And uh, all of them play. So instead of like I, opening. You so, just extended the no. show. <laughs> well, no, no, because it wouldn't take very long. Like instead of doing like the have the assholes come in and give their little mini speech before they open the envelope and the mm. Oscar goes to you just do best actor. And then all of a sudden you see four people. Like, you don't see all 10. You see the four losers give their 30-second loser thing. Oh. And you have the but one if, winner at the end. That's how it's announced. But what if you have 10 nominees, like Best Picture? Well, they can, come on. They can take three minutes. That's fine. Okay. All right. All who right. does that, though? The producers who put the money behind it would have to do that one. Yeah. They'd have to write like a oh we oh man we get like the best we get like a real like <laughs> we get like a real look at like Hollywood like because a lot of those producers don't even fucking talk I know even when they get well, they the come best up picture they yeah they they do their stupid fucking thing at the end yeah Can you imagine Harvey Weinstein doing one of those back in the day oh hi guys from prison <laughs> 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 oh man. <laughs> terrible yeah terrible but yeah i mean there you go i mean that's my that's my do it on the fly fix the oscars pitch all right I guess. i'm glad you thought about this for 30 seconds and right. we've come up with something better more entertaining <laughs> yeah <laughs> then let's do it during the commercial break guys that's terrible that was a horrible idea fire that guy whoever <laughs> came up with that idea but anyways let's go into shit we watched sure um 
I teased it at the beginning, kind of. I saw Cold Pursuit. Yeah. Um, with Liam Neeson. Yep. Uh, plot being that he is a snowplow driver in Colorado. He mm-hmm. wins like Citizen of the Year. Everybody in the community loves him. Um, his son dies of a heroin overdose. Mm-hmm. Uh, but his son is not a truckie. You know, and uh, he, you know, dives into it <laughs> to discover that, you know, his son actually didn't die of a heroin overdose. That's not a spoiler. It was the wolves. Yeah, it was the wolves it who was killed my son. The wolves took his son. They were taken. Yeah, but no. So uh, he it, it's like a re- it's a revenge film. Right. Um, It is fucking great. Okay. I loved it. Really? Oh, it was just beautiful like every time someone dies like their name pops up on the screen with like whatever religious symbol so if it was a jew it'd be the star of david or a christian, christian whatever the there's some native americans in it they have their own whatever symbol i don't know i'm sorry guys right uh but yeah he's he's really good in it he's quiet like really reserved um his wife is played by uh oh god damn it uh, uh, Rene Russo. No, I'm just cutting. No, know. um, ah, Jurassic Park. Uh, Dern, Laura Dern. There it is. Um, the bad guy is good in this. He's like a real asshole. Like you hate his fucking guts. You know, right. he's not one of those like, oh, I can kind of see it from his point of view. Bad uh-huh. guys. He's just a. You know what this is? Piece of shit. In every scene, he's a scumbag, and everything he does is over the top. You know, awful. Uh, it's got some really great violence in it. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, what's her name? Uh, oh, God. Laura Dern? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, she plays the cop in it. She's from the show Shameless. Emmy Rossum, I believe okay. is her name. Uh, she's good in it. Uh, but yeah, it just gets to the point. It's fucking hilarious. I saw it by myself, and there was one other guy in the theater who was by himself, and both of us were like cracking up. Over and over again. Did you guys again. high five? No, like, reach he, was, across the he aisle. was right in front of me. So oh. I could have been like, hey, dude. Hey, <laughs> bro. You know. Cheers for good taste, yeah, man. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was uh, it's it's a dark comedy. Okay. Um, And it's one of those where like you're laughing at really macabre shit. Okay. Which is just fun. I mean, when, yeah. when you know that's what they're going for and they're nailing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's it's a blast. Apparently, it's a remake of an old movie, and I've never seen it. And I forget the name of the other movie, but from like maybe I think it's got a uh, stars stars guard. Uh, maybe Stalin 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 in it. Maybe was the okay. main character in that one. Stalin Stalin yeah Stalin stars guard Stalin stars guard. But yeah, no, I'd recommend it. Uh, I would give it a B plus. That was really good. Oh wow, I liked it quite a bit. It's my favorite, like Liam Neeson. Ah, you know, I'm out for blood movie since The Gray, this which is... which The Gray to me is an A. So just to give people an idea, if you've never seen The Gray, The Gray is fucking fantastic. But this is kind of a crazy February when you think about it, like Alita, How to Train Your Dragon, Cold Pursuit. Yeah, pretty good. Good February. movies. Like, I mean, that's pretty weird. And I've... only one of those is going to make a shitload of money, I would imagine. Oh, shit. There was the Lego movie, too, which was fine. Yeah, that was a disappointment. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've been trying to remember what the other movie was, and I think that was it for February. Yeah, but still, I mean, you get one decent movie a week. That's all right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, I would highly recommend if people like the action Liam Neeson shit, like uh, even if you're burned out on it, like if you thought uh, like nonstop or the commuter were stupid. Right. Like this is not those. This is like a legit, really good movie. Okay. So yeah, I'd highly recommend it. But yeah, what did you see? I watched. I rented. Uh, rough night, rough night. That was the, oh, uh, no. yeah, that, yeah, it was, yeah, it was real rough. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the ladies one? With it was like the Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, All right. They, they kill a guy and it's a bachelorette party and you're watching it and, um, it's just awful. Is it just terrible? It's just terrible. Uh, isn't the SNL Ghostbusters chick in that too? Kate McKinnon. Yes. Which is, I was, you're leading me to one of my points, which is she can be funny in this. And it's almost to the point where you're like, oh my God, is she just this funny? Or is it because she's surrounded by such crap that when she comes in, you're just so surprised that you laugh? And your conclusion was? Uh, I actually think she's genuine, genuinely okay. really talented, 
But this movie is so damn bad that even by the end, she she she's not even funny by the end. I just pulled the poster up and what oh, what were you thinking? I I remember seeing the trailer and I was like, you know what? I like Scarlett Johansson. This might be okay. I'll give yeah, her but a is shot. Is this her role? No. Like, no. <laughs> no. The thing, okay, you're going to love this, by the way. She's she's engaged, going on her bachelorette party. Her husband is one of the two writers of this movie. He plays her husband. Oh, gee. So it's just, it's. He's yeah. like, he wrote this movie to be married to Scarlett Johansson. And. He's he has no charisma. I'm like you belong in a fucking insurance commercial. That reminds me of uh I'm pretty sure Paul W S Anderson who did the Resident Evil movies mm. is married to Mila Jokovic and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. well clearly this is just yeah, you but does making he, a movie. But, but does he put himself in the movie as her husband? No, that would make it worse. Yes. Exactly. This guy has no charisma. He has a bit where he actually spoilers for a fucking terrible movie. It's an F. It's an F. It's an okay. F. Does it get an F plus? Is it short? No. It's not short enough. <laughs> <laughs> um he he has to go like they do d- drugs or something and then they accidentally kill the guy that they believe to be a stripper and then he calls and he's like hey and she's like freaking out and she, he thinks that she doesn't want to get married anymore so he drives down to florida to see her and it's the dumbest fucking thing because he's like oh you know how you get down there fast you put on fucking uh diapers and you just shit in your pants when you're driving so instead of putting pants over his fucking depends he's just walking around in diapers and then a cop pulls him over and he's like oh look at me isn't it funny and then he goes he right he's he his card gets declined so he has to like hang out at a gas station to like fucking get it's like it's fucking awful it's like dude this is such a vanity project for somebody who has no charisma this is insane what i'm watching right now he was awful then you spend the whole goddamn movie with the whole like idea of like oh you guys killed somebody you guys killed a human being and we don't know that he's like a bad person at the time spoilers he's a bad person well of course because you can't have have your characters kill someone good yeah and then it's like the whole like oh we got we got uh we got let go because uh it was it was a good kill according to the state of florida ridiculous because the point is is like okay i like these characters just enough that i don't want to see them go to jail because none of them are truly horrific people except for one who's just so unlikable but I don't want to see them go to jail, but I also don't want to see them get away with murder. And the whole, the majority of the movie is watching them try to like get rid of the body and look at us. We're fucking morons. Hey, we can't shut a fucking garage door. Isn't that hilarious? It's pure garbage. It's so unabashedly horrible. Is it like... Oh, the girls can be naughty, too. Yes. Like, how this doesn't have a zero percent is beyond me. It, what does it have? I don't know. It's got like a 40 or something. Or oh, something. really? Yeah. It's ridiculous. That's pretty high. It's garbage. I might have to see it. It's based based on garbage. Critic, critic it's, acclaim. Yeah. It's critic acclaim. 40 <laughs> percent. Get on board or you're sexist. Is you think, oh, could that be? I don't be? know. I don't know. I just, I don't Sometimes, know. Sometimes, though, to your point, like you do see something like this and you're like, okay, that's the only thing that makes I sense. just don't know what's going on with the critics audience anymore. The audience is 29%. Yeah. yeah, that's weird. It's weird to me. I mean, people like bad movies. 44%. So, so the audience are, have better, have more like. It's just like Battle Angel Alita. Yeah, the opposite. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, okay. I'll be, I'll be skipping that one then. Yeah, it's fucking horrible, man. It was like, it's like pulling, pulling anything out of your body that you don't want. Pull, just pulling anything out of your body. All right. Well, hey, I won't be pulling that movie out of my body to watch it anytime <laughs> what, soon. What was it doing in your body? Hey, it makes perfect sense. It's a part of I don't you. need to explain that to you, man. Change things forever. Um, it's a I part of you. I watched something good. Did you? Yeah, I watched Free Solo. It's a, uh, oh, it's right. a documentary about this guy, Alex... Um, Don, Donald, uh, fuck, I should probably put Donald his name Gleason. <laughs> those, those good, those. No, he doesn't the, play him. It's actually him. It's a fellow Alex. Honnold. He's a good. He's he's a good guy. Alex Honnold. Uh, uh dude is a psychopath. I'm convinced he's a lunatic. Mm. Uh, this guy's thing. I don't know if people may have seen this guy before. He um he free soloing is climbing without a rope, 
and uh he, otherwise it's known as insane yeah and he is fucking like you look at his face and there's just like nothing behind the eyes it's really weird oh that's awesome. it's an interesting character study okay because you're watching and you're like yeah uh it makes sense uh but basically he um he decides to climb uh uh el capitan which is a 900 meter tall rock formation like basically a mountain on the okay. fucking at a uh, yosemite national park okay without ropes mm. and this is like all about him preparing to do this uh the filmmakers are kind of buddies of his you know they just kind of go through his life his girlfriend whatever as he preps doing this and i gotta tell you man there are parts of this that are like you are just holding your fucking breath watching it mm -hmm. because even watching someone do this is fucked like it is like a horror movie at times you're like kind of like biting your knuckle like mm. you know because like one slip like and he goes through it with his harness on mm -hmm. like he does the whole thing he's practicing it Did or whatever and he falls a shit ton and you're like dude if, you, <laughs> if this happens when you do it you're <laughs> fucked it's crazy but yeah it was good it was really good um like as far as making you feel like connected to what was going on, I was I was impressed. You with didn't it. I you it was didn't good. you didn't spoil it for yourself by like oh. just researching to oh, see if I, he's still alive. No, I knew he succeeded, okay. but it doesn't matter. Okay, it's still, you're still like, yeah, it's still yeah. that visceral feeling of watching. Yeah, because well, yeah. the way they shot it too is like you know above him looking down, oh. and you're just like or like sitting there looking up at the mountain. You're, it looks like a fucking flat piece of granite that you could like some of the holds he has. Yeah, are like. Like the and nobody can see we're on a podcast, but but like the tip of his finger is barely over like a little crack. And then he's saying basically that like his feet are what are keeping his hands on or or he's got it the opposite where like he'll have his feet, his hands like rat gripping something and his feet are up against the, the mountain. But the only thing keeping there is the leverage he's using with his hands. And that was, was was crazy, too. It took him four hours to do this. Okay. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, if I did this for 30 seconds, I would fucking die of like <laughs> being out of breath. And the guy is, I mean, it's impressive, but he's also insane. He's fucking insane. And all of his friends are like, <sighs> there goes Alex nuts. again. Yeah. Like, like, okay, so he, uh, spoilers. Hmm. So he tries to do it at one point earlier in the movie, like halfway through the movie, the, the first attempt, and he gets up may, like maybe a, an eighth of the way. At, and it's not even, the sun's not up yet. And he call he bails. And all of his friends are like, okay, well, that's good he did that. But it's, I mean, we've never seen him show any sort of like fear or like, like it's shocking to them that he did this. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a scene where they give him an MRI and is, oh God, I don't know what part of your brain it is, uh, but where the fears are kind of focused, like the there's no activity. Wow. Yeah. So like it takes, it, it takes an extreme amount of whatever to get him to feel anything there. He's daredevil, you know? the yeah. man without fear. Right. Shit. That's crazy. It is crazy, dude. It was really fucking crazy. It you was know that really fear crazy. is like a survival instinct. Yes. He doesn't have that though. He's going to die. I mean, they're going through the movie. They're going through other people who have done this. Like right. and they all live like 30 years. 50 years, whatever. Uh -oh. And they all end up dying by falling off a fucking mountain. <laughs> I got, you know, I wonder if they're at peace with it. There's a part of me that wonders like, well, that's like, kind they, of, like they've thought about like how it's going to feel like falling off a mountain. They, yeah. And He's they're just, just like, it's going to be fine. Like if I'm going to go, I want it to be badass. One of his friends dies while they're filming this. Like a guy who also does this. Okay. And like the, his girlfriend is like talking to the wife of the person or whatever. And she's mm. all devastated and stuff. And the girlfriend's like talking to Alex about, you know, like, oh, this happened, blah, 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 blah. And he, she, he's like, well, what did she expect? And she's like, well, I don't expect that. Like he's completely unaware of like the concept that right. maybe you don't want to say that. Right. You know? Right. It's just, but I, he has a point too. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be with this guy, he might fall off the fucking side of a, you know, you know 4,000 foot fucking wall. Yeah. Know what you're signing up for in yeah. a relationship. Be it realistic about it. Yeah. Whew. You know what I just realized? What's that? I, I, I've been thinking a lot to myself about like, you got to start being more positive, Alex. Okay. You got to start being, you know, 
Don't go out and shit on a movie. There are tons of people that tried. And I just did that on Rough Night. I just, no, I just, I, like I, it. I just Fuck let them. it go. Fuck them. Don't let that uh, velvet buzz uh, stray you, Alex. I just, you Fuck know, them. trying to be a good person. Yeah, but did, they didn't think they were making like a good movie, did they? I imagine there's somebody on there that was hoping it was good. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I don't think anybody signs up for a movie. Well, that's not true. There are definitely people that sign up knowing the movie is going to be crap. But I don't think people going in knowing and hoping that it's going to be crap. I don't know. Anyways, anyways, I'm just getting a little philosophical here for our. Uh, I think a genre movie like that. I think sometimes they know it's crap. I think they're people... they're doing the best they can with what they've decided right. to come out with, but in the end, it's a low budget chick flick. It doesn't need to set the world on fire, right? You know, yeah. But, still, yeah, still right. a little sad. What else did you watch? I wa- <laughs> what other <laughs> shitty thing did you watch? I watched something fucking great, man. Oh. I watched the Umbrella Academy. Okay, how many episodes? The whole thing? Uh, no, no, but I went to bed way too late last night because of it. All right. Uh, I this could... is a superhero show on Netflix not related to Marvel, Marvel. or DC, yeah. correct? This is a Dark Horse comic. It's about, uh, so you've got, I believe it was 13 children uh, were all born. Same birthday, right? Same birthday, okay. born on the same day from women who magically all became pregnant like out of nowhere. It, out of nowhere. Okay. Yes. Yes. So they're all Anakin Skywalkers. Basically. Uh, but but they were pregnant and they were nine months pregnant in an instant. Got it. And then uh, so there's this rich eccentric guy who goes around uh, and he adopts these kids. Uh, he adopts seven. He, he adopts as many as he can. He adopts seven of them. Sure. And uh, they start displaying superpowers. Of course they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's a fucking riot, man. It's good, man. Worth watching then, even if you've been oh. burned by Netflix comic shows. See, this is where I just look at it and I'm like, this is why Marvel is the exception to the rule. Because once again, Netflix coming out with a fucking stellar sci-fi yes. show. Another one. Like it, the first episode is so it's like it, it reminds me of like, you know, like Watchmen. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's like a fusion of, uh, 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 I would say, like watch- a gritty realism to it and shit. Or? There's a gritty realism, like a dark realism, but there's also like a like a uh, old class, like they wear the domino masks. Okay. And uh, what? Okay, so it's like a fusion of like uh, a series of unfortunate events. Okay. Uh, like a Wes Anderson movie. Sure. And and Watchmen. Okay. And it's. Sounds like a little X-Men in there, too. There's a little X-Men? Yeah. The way that they introduce the superpowers is fantastic because it's so incredibly mundane. It just happens in a conversation. It's not like, ooh, here's the montage of right. them discovering no, I gotta the powers. I got to watch this one. I want to watch this one. It looked good in the trailer. It looked like all the heroes were kind of super unique from each other and yes. different. Yeah. See, and, and part of the reason why it was so great was I actually didn't finish the trailer. I was just like, oh, this is from the guy who did Hellboy. Okay. I'll check it out. I'll check right. it out. And I started watching... And they just introduced a talking monkey. Yeah, the monkey. I saw that in the trailer. I didn't see it in the trailer. Dude, holy shit. This is like Planet of the Apes CGI on a TV show. Oh, stop. No, it. dude, you have to see I this. I saw the monkey. He's not Planet of the Apes quality. He's super fucking He's a little more good. cartoonish looking. He's super fucking good. I'm excited to watch it. He's. Uh, I think you need to see him in like a full scene because I was blown away by the monkey. But- Story is really good. The writing is really good. There's a character in it who can talk to dead people. And I'm like, I'm I'm watching him and I'm like, this is kind of how I envisioned Loki before the Thor movies came out. Sure. Um, Really eccentric, really out there, uh, smoked cigarettes all the time, really kind of like a weird goth hipster kind of guy, but chaotic. So he's like John Constantine. Uh, But super charismatic. He's a druggie. Okay. He's a druggie, but he's my son's not a druggie. Yeah. It was the wolves who did the drugs. <laughs> they took the drugs. Continue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's it's great. It's I'm only three or four episodes in. I mean, holy shit. I just think about that first episode and I'm like, this is some of the best TV writing I've seen in a while. All right. So Netflix, again, just absolutely killing it. Yeah, I'm going to start that one. 
Um, I did start the Russian doll, but I'll wait until I watch all that to go through it. Okay. Uh, another one I watched. I went and saw a Chinese movie this weekend. Oh, the yes. Big, the big budget breakout Chinese film that I had read a projection had the possibility of breaking a billion in China. Yeah. Like Chinese ticket sales. Yes. Uh, the alone. wandering. One, yes. One country alone. <laughs> Crazy. Insane. Uh, but it was called The Wandering Earth. Um, it's kind of a cool title. It was an okay movie. It wasn't great. Okay. It wasn't like, I wasn't like blown away, but I think part of the problem is it's, it's taking bits and pieces from like American sci-fi shit. It's got like a little Mm -hmm. Michael Bay in there. Okay. Like a little Armageddon going on. Okay. And then it's got like a one character. I thought they were going for like a Hal. Uh, 2001 oh, thing. Okay. Um, but basically, the plot is the sun is like kind of contracting, expanding, and it's uh-huh. like the end of the world, basically. Okay. Um, so they decide their plan is to build these 10,000 world engines that they will strap to the side of the earth and oh. move the earth. Oh, this seems like a genius idea. So, 2,500 years is how long this journey is going to take to Are get to the new location are they moving slowly enough so that they're not gonna like i mean is the moon coming with no but that's what's in they they go into that kind okay, of stuff okay. though they All get right. into like this is going to call cause tidal waves or whatever okay. so basically under these engines is where they build the cities in the earth Oh, so, Jesus. Uh, so above ground, it's like it's in you can't uh, there's no this there's is, no life on the surface. This is sounding cooler. The more you describe it's, it, it's actually. cool. OK. Uh, and the more I'm talking about it, the more I'm liking it. Actually, just discussing, just discussing it. it. Yeah. You're, like, you're like, it's got ideas. But it does. It does. It has ideas. But it all comes down to the same cliched scenes you gotcha. know, like yeah. the ice thing is breaking as they're trying to drive through whatever. Uh, right. Or, or there's a character who has to sacrifice himself so that the earth will be saved. Or mm. like there's a Bruce Willis in Armageddon scene in this movie. Is there and a you Ben watch Affleck? It and you're like, yeah. There, there's a there Chinese, is. there's a Chinese Ben Affleck. Yeah, there's a Chinese Ben Affleck. Yeah. But, Sweet. but there's a couple likable characters. Uh, one thing that was shitty about it was the subtitles were like, they were using like present tense where past tense should be like things were just a little off, mm. like words missing in sentences. So whoever did the translation on this for the, the- theatrical release, mm-hmm. hopefully they'll clean that up before it gets to Blu-ray or whatever. But, um, yeah, it was, it was. Mm, it was something the Chinese something. people was, I saw it in a theater filled with Chinese people mm-hmm. and they fucking loved it it was funny because there was like a couple parts where there were jokes that clearly I'm not in on right you know like and uh, I actually mentioned it to one of my buddies one of the jokes I think was something about like oh well you can never see the stars from Beijing like I should have known when my dad told me I'd see him in the stars you can never see the stars from Beijing and mm-hmm. everybody ha, 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 ha. and I'm sitting there like I have no uh, clue wait, what that wait. joke was. Yeah, but it's like the smog. And I'm like, oh, mm. the smog. Uh, the smog. Smog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The desolation of the smog stops oh my God. people. But, but um, the effects were believable. I mean, they're not the greatest. They look a little cartoony at times. I'm wondering how this was shown because it almost looked like they were streaming it at times during mm. the big effects scenes. Oh, no. Uh, but not terrible. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, C plus, I guess. Okay. But but definitely something you're going to want to check out just because it's kind of a trip. It's okay. like they really like wanted to make something special here. And the beginning is tight. You're like sitting there like, OK, they're explaining, you know, instead of doing like the Alita thing where it takes 20 minutes, it's kind of the like their version of the crawl gotcha. where they're just like setting it up. Like, here's what happened. Here's what we did as a solution. This is where we're at now mm. and whatever. But the but the main plot of the movie, as far as the conflict goes, is they're trying to get past Jupiter mm-hmm. and some of the engines fail mm-hmm. and the gravitational pull of Jupiter is so large that they need to get past Jupiter to continue their journey. So that's like that's the goal uh. is get everything fixed. Do what we can to get past Jupiter. Jupiter ascending. <laughs> yeah. Well, descending. Descending Jupiter. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I thought it was, uh, it's worth seeing if you're interested in science fiction, I guess. You ever, you ever thought about this? You ever thought like maybe there's like a Chinese version of you 
on the other side of like he's like you know it's like chinese bored and annoyed and he's like "Eh, i saw the new avengers i don't understand what those americans are all about it was all right there were jokes that i did not understand i'm sure no see no i'm they liked venom (laughs) (laughs) well see the reason they like venom (laughs) is because the jokes are so bad that they're universal I it's not like he's like, we've, well, you know, San Francisco get, in those days, like, you know, there's nothing in, in there. You're going to get me in trouble here. But they like some really bad shit. Yeah, they like the Marvel movies, don't they? In they, China? they like the Mar- the Marvel movies. Are you trying to say the Marvel movies? No, are bad? no, I'm saying there's no fucking way. I mean, I would imagine something would have to be horrible, like The Last Jedi for the Chinese to shit on it. Mm. OK. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, no, I thought it was pretty good. I just imagine that there are Chinese who are like, I don't, I don't. It's it, like you look at like the numbers for the Guardians of the Galaxy series, and there are lots of cultural references Got to it. our. Yes. Yeah. No, that's true. And and they don't like right. Guardians that much. That makes sense. Speaking of Asians, yeah, uh, I also watched Burning. Oh, South Korean right. Yeah, film. yeah. That, that that came out uh, not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, so this one I had seen on like people I respect, like top five films of the year list. Yeah, I think uh, Chris Stuckman had it. Yes, in one he of had his. it way up there, right? Yeah. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Um, plot is basically, and I'm, you're going to have to forgive me, I don't know their names or don't remember their names. I could pull them up, but I probably couldn't say them. Okay. Um, but uh, basically, this guy meets this girl, and uh, she goes on like a vacation to Africa, by herself and he's sent to like watch her cat while she's gone she comes back and she like comes back with this guy who she was in a uh africa with or he was also there they were stuck in the airport or something played Mm -hmm. by uh glenn from uh the walking dead yeah um and like it's a whole jealousy thing going on there's a whole like lower class versus upper class there might be like a north korea south korea metaphor going on here but basically it's this mystery um, and I don't want to go too far into it because the movie kind of it kind of drags you along and there's a lot of little twists and turns. Okay. And anything I say as far as plot, I feel like could be ruining something. Right. But um, I was very engaged. It ended and I was a little bit like it had kind of a crazy ending, but also kind of a oh what? Mm. You know, like maybe it's one of those movies where I need to go like study a fucking book to understand what the metaphor was, or maybe there were just a ton of them and maybe I'm trying too hard to think of what it was, but it was good. Okay. Um, I would recommend it to people who don't mind like something a little slow where you have to think, cause it's a mystery. It's kind of a, it's a not, it's a thriller, but it's not thrilling. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Like, yeah, I, uh, I would give it a B. I'm not going to, I don't, I wasn't as crazy about it as other people seem to be. All right. It seemed a little hoity toity to be crazy about it, to be okay. honest with you. But okay. But yeah, it was pretty good. So yeah, I had an Asian themed weekend. Yeah, very much yeah. so. Um, uh, you know, I've been thinking, you know, like we're kind of getting up there in age. Yeah. Um, I feel like you you're know, setting something up here. No, no. I just, I've been thinking about this a lot. Like you ever have like, yeah, we're getting to that age now where like somebody's like, can't trust a fart, you know, can't trust a fart. And, uh, you know, when I saw Battle Angel Alita, <laughs> I was glad that I could trust a fart. Yeah. I was glad I have this healthy sphincter. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't even get this, but continue. <laughs> because Battle Angel Alita is good and I would have shit my pants if I had less of a sphincter. <sighs> It works. It works. I don't get it. The listeners, let us know if you get that one. I'd shit my pants. If if you you would shit your pants. If I had a lesser sphincter. Sure, but because out of shock, you don't trust a fart. Okay. Yeah. The logic follows. I is not. Whatever. Okay. I'm not sure it does. Okay. I, I was really whole. The, this is like burning. I was expecting like this. This really big grand fucking, thing. Yes. yes. <laughs> This grand fart <laughs> yeah. joke is what you were expecting. I was. Fuck. See, it's all about expectations. Yeah. You don't think Alita's going to be that good, and it's great. I don't understand how you can't follow that logic. If you can't trust a fart, you can't trust your sphincter. I'm really glad I can trust my sphincter. Okay. 
The logic follows. So if you couldn't trust your sphincter, you would have shit your pants. With or, how good the movie was. Okay. Sure. I just don't know what the fart has to do with my, like, you know. If you can't trust a fart. Right. You'll shit your pants you'll if you try to your fart. Pants. I understand yeah. that. Okay. But yeah. I, it's it's Anyways, over my head. Anyways, let's move on. Yeah. I'm really glad that that really hit really well. It did. Planned it out. Everything. Anytime wrote it down. you really have to explain. No, you did not. Wrote it down. <laughs> Actually, yeah. There's his notes right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's get into the anime discussion, which is why are these movies not doing well? Uh, I think you're asking the guy who doesn't know anime. Right. Well, but 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 you have seen advertisements for it. You've sure. seen, you know, you've seen Pokemon, you've seen Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, sure. You watched an, an episode of uh, Death Note. I did, and I watched Ghost in the Shell, the movie. Ghost in the Shell, yeah, I lent um, that to you, yeah. I watched that streaming, Alex. Oh, did I not lend that yeah. to you? Okay, I thought yeah. I lent it to you. Okay. Yeah, don't try to take credit. I went out of my way okay. to Fair. watch that. Fair enough. This show's over. Show's over. No, I'm show's just kidding. Show's over. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my house um no but uh so my okay i think reason one is that they're usually not good right the movies are not yes, good the movies yeah no the anime i you know right they can be good but the, but the movies aren't good so like ghost in the shell stunk it had nice visuals and it had decent sparsely placed decent scenes it had one scene i really liked it had, it, had, it, had, it had a bunch of crap like that looked neat. Yeah. It had one scene that I really liked, but the movie sucked. Right. I, I was bored as fuck watching that. Mm. I thought that stunk. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't work, first of all, because of that. Um, it sounds like, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. How many movies have do you think I've probably seen that were based on anime franchises, I guess, would be the way to start this conversation. Well, yeah, we've seen you've seen two. Okay. Yeah, this, that, and Alita. Yeah. So they're 50-50 right now. Right. Okay. But, I mean, we've... But you know Dragon Ball Evolution is sure. a... Tr- it looks like garbage. Right, yeah. yes. And, uh, I mean, I don't even think that it's just limited to just U.S.-based adaptations. There are also just Japanese ones where they make it into live action, and it's just horrendous. There's okay. There's a... a, a de- oh, there... There's one Death Note. Okay, that, I haven't that, watched that. That wasn't Japanese. That was American, but it was just garbage. It was straight garbage. Um, and then there's a, there's a Full Metal Alchemist one. There's a Attack on Titan one. These, these are bad adaptations, but they're made in Japan, which is strange. Like okay. they look faithful. Like they look like, but the they're anime. just bad. They're just p- really poorly made. So I'm wondering, uh, you as somebody who's not an anime fan, okay, is there something that like when you're when you've seen advertisements for it, when you've seen posters or whatever it is, is there something inherently like you're looking at and you're like, yeah, it's not for me. Well, most of the time, I got to be honest, if I see a poster for something like that, I'm not going to know what's based on an anime in the first place. No, I mean, if you see a poster for like an actual anime. anime. Oh, yeah. no, I mean, no, I just don't watch them. So okay. like if, if somebody were to tell me like, oh, this is great. Mm-hmm. I would watch it, you know, like uh, I'm actually interested in seeing that Dragon Ball Z movie. Maybe that's not maybe that's just like <laughs> mainstream anime fans, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I don't fucking know. Okay. It lo- I, you know, I'd be interested in seeing that. I thought okay. it was decent, but um, not not the original, the new one. Right. The one yeah, that yeah. just came out. Right. The yeah, actual yeah. anime one. Right. Um, I kind of want to see uh, which what's the one that's coming out at some point. They've greenlit a movie for it. Fuck. Everybody's talked about it. Oh, it's like one of the more famous anime. Uh, Neo Genesis. No, nope. uh, no, there's a movie coming out. My Hero Academia. Nope. Pokemon. Nope. Uh, there's like a bike. I want to say there's a bike involved in it. Uh, Akira. Akira. Yeah. So there, we're getting a movie of that. Uh, well, there it's it's been in development. Hell. It's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to well, happen. We're well, going to get a movie. Yeah, yeah. So I had heard about that's one that I had heard about without any movie being announced, whatever uh-huh. I've just heard of that. So I'm interested in watching that, okay. but no, I don't have anything against them. I think maybe, I think maybe they, this is going to sound maybe bad, but I feel like they try to like, it's all, they're trying to be cool to American audiences and they might take that overboard sometimes. The movies, the adaptations, the anim- no, the anime, the animes, you, you wait, you think that they, they, they try- don't look like Asian people. They look like, 
They, See, they look like Amer. They look like what they think of Americans to me. Like I don't know. It's just fucking well, weird. What I, I what I will throw out there is that um, I mean, anime is kind of burst off the back of a character known as Astro Boy. Uh, and okay. Ast- and Astro Boy being the first manga, the first anime character, he's loosely sort of based off of like stylistically kind of like Walt Disney cartoons. Sure. So I think that that was sort of the idea is like this was like this guy trying to do like a Mickey Mouse type thing. Okay. And he sort of like took that kind of art style a little bit. And so I, I don't even think it's necessarily like we're trying to be like, you know, Caucasians. We're just trying to emulate. Like initially it started like that was an art style that, that they were trying to emulate. Cultural and like, now it's like art, yeah. it's like this weird, like you know, offspring of like a offshoot kind of thing. Sure. You know? But it is sort of strange. Like that is the weird thing, is like you look at the big eyes and you're like, where did this come yeah, from? Yeah, it's weird. And why is it in Dragon Ball Z they their hair turns yellow? And when they they're get, being when, badass. Yeah. Right. Like that's a strange cultural thing. Yes. Yes, and I think that people, including maybe myself, I don't know, like I, you know, I'm not a, like, like I said, I'm not against anime, Mm -hmm. but I would imagine that some people just think that's goofy as fuck and don't give it the time of day for that reason. Also, I think people just don't like cartoons when they get to a certain age and they're kind of towing that line where it's like a lot of the subject matters too highbrow for kids. Uh Uh-huh. But it's still a cartoon. Yep. So a lot of people are just going to not watch it that are above the age that it's for. Right. And a lot of people aren't going to watch it that are younger. So they kind of fuck themselves You think it's like a weird... I I think it might be kind of bringing on a a cultural thing, which is like in Japan, like adults watch anime. Right. Like it's like it's it's a cultural thing. Like on their primetime TV, they have anime. You know, God, that's so bizarre to yeah, think about. Yeah. Like a Saturday, like a, a Thursday night, you know, we've have CSI and they have Battle Angel Alita, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I was thinking like, oh, that sounds a lot better than like the shit Bravo spews out on fucking, you right. know what I mean? Well, they also have really weird game shows too. That's so. true. Yeah. I have seen those. <laughs> um, but I mean, it, it is sort of, you, you kind of brought up a good point in that. I do, and now we're all actually stumbling onto an entirely different uh, topic, which is the idea of animation and the age group that it's intended for. You know, because like it's almost like the Bill Maher argument, like, oh, you can't like it because it's this medium, and that medium is for children. Well, sure. isn't it the content of the story and the intended audience? Isn't that the audience that it's made for? Well, let's be real. There are, I mean, the, regardless of how good like Into the Spider-Verse was, mm-hmm. there is a segment of the population that doesn't want to see that because, oh, it's a kid's movie because right. it's a cartoon. Well, see, and, and you're actually, that is a kid's movie. That's an animated movie that is made for right, kids. But so is Spider-Man, the Marvel the one with Tom Holland. That's also yes. a kid's movie. Yes. But it's. Like you're probably getting a more wide range audience age gotcha. wise than you're you saying, are. You're with, saying there are people who are willing to go see a children's movie if it's in live action, but not cartoon. They don't think of it as the same thing. They right. see cartoon and they go, "Oh, that's that's, that's a for cartoon. Kids. Yeah, that's, that's a for kiddie kids. movie. Yeah. yeah, you know, and that, that's not right. Right. But I mean, I'm just that, that's I'm just thinking, you know. But how that relates, swinging it back around to these anime adaptations, I right. don't know because, like, I know Alita is an anime property mostly because I just pay attention to things. Do I think that everyone knows that? Not necessarily. Maybe right. the people who would be interested in seeing a move like a sci-fi action world building movie like this know. Right. But I don't even know. I think. Oh God, I I feel like there's a certain buzz. There's a like a, they hear it's made on an out of or the press knows it's an anime property. Yeah, they start shitting on it right away. Yeah, Alita was tracking terribly as of two or three months ago before anybody fucking saw it. Yeah, people see that shit. They hear it's gonna be a bomb and it fucking bombs. Yeah, I mean I do think there's like a self fulfilling prophecy going on. I th- Not self fulfilling, but a media caused. I th- thing going on, you I know, d- I, I, I tend to agree in that. I think that there are conversations that are being had 
And there's also just the stigma of, oh, it's an anime movie. Those are traditionally bad. Bad. Right. Like, it's kind of like the idea of, like, why do all video game movies fail? Well, they all fail because they've all been bad up they to this stink. point. They stink. Yeah. Didn't and so they now, say Rampage was, like, the highest rated on Rotten Tomatoes video game Something like that, movie? which is which is just sickening because you think about Mortal Kombat, the original. That was a way, way better movie. I thought not, so. Not a great movie by any stretch. And it's aged worse, but yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I do look at this and I'm like... It's a strange thing to me because I look at a, I look at anime in the same light that I look at like a comic book, because a comic book can be mature, it can be childish. It's just a medium uh, through which stories are told. Yeah, what's the difference? Yeah, exa- exactly. It's just the different country it comes from. Really, that's the I, only I mean, difference. The, like I said, most of the anime I've been exposed to, though, although I guess Dragon Ball Z would be kind of an exception to what I've seen, but it's like it's bloody. There's mm-hmm. like adult shit going on. Yeah. Uh, comic books can be that, but the main basis of comic books are not that. Yes. So that's a little different. It's kind of easier to like gauge what age range this is for. Yeah. Whereas with anime, it's like, oh, only nerds like this. Like, right. Kids don't even like this because they're not old enough to watch this. I wouldn't show this to my right. kids. And anyone who's an adult wouldn't watch this filth. Yeah. You know. So you're just stuck with like, you know, nerds, nerds. Yeah. People so who just like really whittles down your audience. It's it's a really it. It is a strange thing to me as somebody who just appreciates story to see something like like you, you just broke it down pretty simply there. Somebody who's just like, yeah, I'm not going to watch it because it's it's animated. But and that means it's for kids. But also you're a weird person for liking that, even right. though it's very mature and it's actually probably more adult than like you said, maybe the Spider-Man movie that was just sure, released. Yeah. You know, I do find that really odd. And I find it odd that this is like, it's video games and it's anime when the comic book movie bubble bursts, if that ever happens. I I mean, it's been 20 years. I just, I don't know when it's going to happen. We just keep count, like we just keep resetting like the, it's superhero fatigue. But it's those, those are your two options as far as like, I shit you can adapt or yeah. you come up with new original content which <laughs> which is i <laughs> yeah. mean good well i mean half the time comics now graphic novels are being developed with the specific purpose of being made into a movie well, how eventually. depressing is it this alita thing comes out and it's like okay well people are sick of comic book movies but yeah. they like their action you know i mean whatever yeah. and here's an example of one that comes out that people aren't aware of they yep. haven't been exposed to and it comes out and it makes 40 million against like, I'm sorry, but Captain Marvel's tracking to make three times what this one made yeah. on its opening and, weekend. Yeah. I got to imagine more people are going to come out of Alita if they choose to go and see it. More like more feeling impressed. like I saw something I haven't seen in a while. I was impressed. Yeah. Like, it didn't feel like I was on autopilot waiting. You know what I mean? There, there's a part of me that, I mean, I know for sure it's, you know, it's a badass female movie. It's too badass female movies sure there's a part of me that i know is going to walk out and be like kind of disappointed in that action compared to alita i, I well, know it's gonna it's happen go- it's gonna I think happen that's going to happen for to me for like the next year at least probably i mean that was fucking amazing and I, i'm sitting here too like to the point i made earlier like a lot of people who aren't seeing alita their reasoning is the eyes yeah like it's too cartoony it looks too it's like yeah, but you haven't even given it a chance to understand why the eyes look that way. Right. You don't understand, like, you think this is just a kitty movie or whatever, but uh, it's pretty violent yeah. at times. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. I think it's like, it's kind of stupid, but that's the only thing to come up with. It's And it's, that they're not good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, up to, up to this point. But I mean, there's also the idea of like, you know, you kind of brought up like, oh, people don't even know that this is an anime adaptation. They just see like stupid thing or whatever. And they think, oh, it's going to fail. They've been told right. it's going to fail. If that's the case, you know, there's the real hope that this could have actually caught on because there's not much in it that screams anime other than her eyes. I would agree. And I mean, I don't know the medium, but there's a mix. And I don't know. Maybe you can tell me, is there like a you know, a, a mixture of like this kind of sappy, like twilighty feeling this story over here. And like, you know, people getting their fucking heads chopped off that, and limbs that, chopped off. And in, shit. All, in all honesty, like some of the best ones, I would actually say have that dichotomy okay. of, of real sincere 
probably borderline melodrama going right. on and severe graphic violence. Sure. There you go. Those are that and, that and that to me, that's why I like it is because you get this melodrama of like the story and usually the story is really well done. But then you have these amazingly like more often than not, you actually described exactly what I go through on a virtually every action movie basis, which is. I'm usually really disappointed with the action because I've been exposed to anime for so long. And anime action, if it's good, is better than most live action, live action action. Sure, but not everyone's into that style of action. Right, right. And I'm not talking about like that bullshit that you saw with like Pokemon with like a still picture and then like the Got moving yep. background. You know, like there's horrible anime out there. Like sure. don't get me no. wrong. But it's it's a strange world we live in where... We've got legitimately well-told stories, and we're just rejecting them because well, some it's, of it was them a car- though. Some of them aren't. That's true. I mean, I mean, but Death Note is a story that. Oh, oh, would- yeah. Okay, I thought you meant like the the. I thought you meant people are shitting on the adaptations even when they're no, good. I don't no, think there's many good no. ones. It's well, and and that's sort of the strange one where we're having almost the same topic or talk we would have about video game ones, which which is. Why aren't we giving these the right respect that they're due? Why are we just turning them? Why is Hollywood turning them over for a quick buck? Into schlocky bullshit. Yeah. Right. When when they're just like, if you just treated it with the respect that Lord of the Rings was given, you know? Yeah. There's no reason why you couldn't turn like Resident Evil into a good horror movie. Instead, it's this fucking ridiculous. Right. Or a Metal Gear Solid movie. Like so many video game movies could be great. And there are lots of animes that could be great, too. But we don't get that. And it's a very strange thing to see. Yeah. Well, we got one. We got one. I thought. I mean, I really liked it. I'm hoping that this opens the floodgates. I mean, as somebody. No, because it has to do well. So it's up to you, people, to open the floodgates. We did this on our review for the movie. Yes. We're going to do it again. Go see it. It's (laughs) awesome. Yeah, I mean, I guess there was no avoiding talking about it again. But but yeah, no, I I mean, we'll get more if they do well. This is what I've been preaching. This is why even when I see shitty mortal engines and I kind of have fun with it, I still want people to see it because to me it's like, okay, I want to see more of this kind of shit. Yeah. Battle Angel Alita was a good version. Of it was it, it was the world building like interesting like setting you know characters whatever yeah but it was yeah it was done well it was actually good it yes. wasn't just like entertaining for me because I like that kind of shit it was actually like oh see this yes. can be done yes so I think that's the end of the episode yeah sure thanks for listening guys we've been bored and annoyed uh, you can check us out on Twitter you can go to bored tonight annoyed.com and uh, get all of our associates there right bye bye <laughs>